Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in for our next episode of Spot On Series. My name is Oksana Sannikova, I am Security Program Realty Lead at Cisco at Global Security Architecture Team and I am happy to present to you this holiday edition of Spot On Series. This edition is going to be a little bit different from the other episodes that we did. We're still going to work with SecureX and orchestration, but I want to show you something that I actually did as a side project for my family. So my daughter really likes this portal, santatracker.google.com. There are a lot of activities that you can do with your kid um, before Christmas holidays to kind of anticipating that holiday season to come. And there has been one locked activity which is going to unlock in December. So she was curious what that is and I was curious too. Then I started Googling it and I found out that what Google actually does is they release a... Um, JSON file with a Santa root. So here is this JSON file. It's it's a very long file. It has more than 400 uh, items, and each item is a stop that Santa is going to make on uh, Christmas Eve when he brings his presents to the kids. So here is another look how this file looks I like. I have downloaded it and started looking at it. So it tells tells you the time when Santa is going to arrive to this place, when he's going to depart from this particular place, the city, the region, the latitude and longitude, and then some details, such as how many presents has been given, some pictures from that location as well. So I thought, this is kind of cool. I want to do something about it. I decided to create a tool that will um, take my location and then take the Santa route and will notify me and my daughter when Santa is without 100 kilometers from our place. So that's essentially what this orchestration workflow is doing. If we open this up, you will see that we take address as an input and then we start working with Google Maps APIs. By the way, I had to create a um, trial GCP account to get access to these APIs. And then um, as long as you stay within the free limit that they give you, you should be okay, which is more than enough for this particular project. I have used various Google Maps APIs to get coordinates from my location and place ID. And then we uh, fetch JSON file with Santa's root from that uh, URL that I have uh, shown you above. And then we split it up and we loop through all of the items in that tap table, taking each of the Santa's stops. We get Santa's coordinates. We calculate the distance between our location and Santa's location. Then we check if we have uh, found the distance at all because we are only looking at distance location by car. So if Santa is on another continent, we are not going to get any output at all from that calculation. Right. So that we're checking if we have gotten the results and then if the results are within 100 kilometers distance, in, it can be in miles as well. And then if that's the case, then we create a um, WebEx Teams card and we post that card to WebEx Teams space. So to give you a sample of uh, what that looks like, this is the WebEx Teams space and this is the test that I did last week when I was testing my solution here, my workflow here. Uh, when, the, when Santa reaches the point and by the way, as you can see from the dates, I was using the JSON file for available for last year. For this year, we don't have that yet released. So I really look forward to Christmas Eve to run my workflow and see what results we're going to receive. As you can see, last year, Santa was uh, around my house at about 5 a.m. on the 25th in the morning and then he spent in Toronto about one minute and he was able to give this many presents to the kids. So that's I thought that's kind of cool. Uh, my daughter is going to enjoy it, I am sure. She is really into coding, so I'm even going to show her the workflow and how it works and uh, I hope she will really like that. 
Um, I also wanted to give you a little bit of overview of the WebEx Teams card that I have created. So that's one of the latest additions to WebEx Teams capabilities, button and cards. And there is a blog post on, on developer.webex.com that goes through that functionality and tells you how to configure that. And there is actually a design tool that I also use to design my card. Originally, I wanted to include the whole picture, but because of some considerations that I will talk about in a second, I had to take the picture out and just include the link to that picture. And so when you design this card by just dragging and dropping, dropping di different objects into the space and then con configuring other details such as font type, font size, some text around it, then uh, down below you will have your JSON structure for this card that you can uh, copy. So you just copy JSON card and then you would include it in your API call to WebEx Teams. And I have created this WebEx Teams Atomic. If we take a look at here, it includes the card which is being attached here in this content variable. And then the rest is the same for the WebEx Teams message that you would include with any API call such as room ID, the tag that accompanies it, and then here goes the content type for the adaptive card that we use. And so a few considerations that I mentioned before that I want to bring to your attention is um, there's some specifications that you have to meet, such as the whole structure of the API body that you send to a WebEx Teams API should not exceed this amount of bytes. So you, you, you have to test first and verify that your message fits within these parameters or you will get an error if that's too long. And then also any attachments that come with the message such as um, adaptive card should not exceed 80 kilobytes. And this is why I wasn't able to attach the image because um, the image I have received from that JSON file is much, much larger and it just didn't fit into that specification. But as you can see, I have included the link and if I go back here and, and just click on that, um, we see the picture in the browser window. So next I want to talk a little bit about the Google Maps APIs that I have used. I have used uh, a geocoding API to get uh, latitude and longitude and place ID for my location. As an alternative, you can use place API and search for a specific place if you don't have an address. This is also an option that I considered first for my um, workflow. And then I have also used a distance matrix API to calculate the distance between two locations, which are longitude and latitude of Santa's location and place ID of my place. And then I also use JSON path Dot com to build my uh, JSON query structures for the orchestration. Um, if you're not familiar with that context, I will include the link to SecureX orchestration documentation that will take you through some simple examples and explain you what JSON path is. So I always use tools like that to build my queries and test that they work the way I expect them to work before I put them into my orchestration workflow and run it to test. Also, I have published this workflow to my GitHub. If you want to take a look and maybe run it uh, to have some fun with your kids in this holiday season. I know this is a fun project. I just wanted to share something uh, kind of off topic with you that are Christmas related and I hope you will enjoy it. And some of the prerequisites that you will need if you decide to run it, you will need to have a GCP account and access to Google Maps APIs, which means that you will have a project with billing enabled on it, uh, which is available through trial account as well. Uh, here's the APIs that you will need to enable. <clears throat> and for WebEx Teams, again, you will need to have an account and it's very easy to sign up. You will have to create a WebEx Teams space and uh, have that space ID, which is also very easy to do. And then you will have to generate your WebEx Teams API token or create a bot. And in the documentation for this repo, I have included all information about these steps. 
So let's actually run our workflow and see how it works. I will run it manually. You can also run it on schedule. Um, you can configure a uh, calendar uh, event and configure it as a trigger here. You see it will be um, scheduled and you can run it every day or every 30 minutes. There are some pre-configured schedules um, that you can use. In our case, for the sake of this demo, I will run it manually. In this case, I will provide a uh, Cisco office address in Toronto because I am based in Toronto. If uh, Santa is around that building, I would consider that close enough to let me know. So I hit run and it starts executing. And as you can see, we slowly start looping through. If you click on this, not everyone knows about this feature, but if you click on this drop down error here, at the top right corner of this for loop structure, you will see that you can loop and click on any of the iterations and actually check all of the values and execution for each of the iterations. So as I mentioned at the beginning, there are more than 400 stops that Santa is going to make. So looping through all of them is going to take a while. I'm going to pause the video while we are waiting for the results of the workflow. So as you can see, the workflow has executed and uh, we have received the card saying, sharing with us information about when Santa is going to visit Toronto. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope it was interesting to you and I wish everyone a happy holiday season and I hope to see everyone in the next calendar year.